Welcome to Breaking Doctrine, Foxhole Fundamentals, a U.S. Army Combined Arms Center podcast. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the official position of the United States Army, the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command, or the Combined Arms Center. Welcome to Breaking Doctrine, Foxhole Fundamentals, a U.S. Army Combined Arms Center podcast that addresses the basic tenets principles, and overall ideas in Army doctrine. I'm Captain Wyatt Harper, and this podcast topic is planning pitfalls. With me today is Mr. Mike Flynn, the lead author of Army Doctrine Publication 5.0, The Operations Process. Mr. Flynn, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. So for our audience who listens to our sister series, Breaking Doctrine, you'll know that in that series, we cover a wide variety of topics. We do cover some tactical implications in doctrine, but the show tends to focus on operational and strategic level subjects. The amount of research that goes into each Breaking Doctrine episode is quite thorough, often taking weeks, if not months, to put a show together. In Breaking Doctrine Foxhole Fundamentals, we'll explore some fundamental doctrine-related subjects, along with guests who are selected for their subject matter expertise in the topics. In this episode, we're going to narrow our discussion to one specific aspect that ADP 5.0 warns us of, planning pitfalls. We're going to kick this discussion off by reviewing an excerpt from ADP 5.0. CAD is now producing audiobooks, so this is lifted directly from the publication. Planning pitfalls. In war, leaders of small units are usually no more than one or two jumps ahead of physical and mental exhaustion. In addition, they run a never-ending race against time. In such conditions, long, highly involved orders multiply the ever-present chance of misunderstanding, misinterpretation, and plain oversight. Infantry in Battle, 1939. Commanders and staffs recognize the value of planning and avoid common planning pitfalls. These pitfalls generally stem from a common cause— the failure to appreciate the unpredictability and uncertainty of military operations. Pointing these out is not a criticism of planning, but of planning improperly. Common planning pitfalls include attempting to forecast and dictate events too far into the future, trying to plan in too much detail, using the plan as a script for execution, institutionalizing rigid planning methods, The audiobook version of ADP 5.0 is available on the Central Army Registry, and we'll put that link in our show notes. So, Mr. Flynn, let's get started with how the Army defines planning. Yeah, so um, I think think it's really important when we talk about planning just as a topic. And so we'll get to the definition in a second, but a lot of people, when they think about planning, sometimes their head immediately goes to, for example, the MDMP. And, and you start thinking step one, receipt of mission, step one, alpha, alert the staff. Very technical, procedural, et cetera. And um, so that is a form of planning. But, but if you notice, in, and this is where our AT, ADPs get into fundamentals, we go beyond kind of just technical things, but get into fundamentals and principles. And so that kind of deals us with the definition of planning. And um, so, you know, we do have a formal definition. You know, planning is both art and science of understanding a situation, envisioning a desired future, and and, and determining effective effective ways of bringing that future about. So that's our formal definition, but you can see it's pretty open-ended. And 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 it's it's not, and it's intended to be that way. Because planning is, you know, know, you got to, one of the things you got to ask yourself is, you know, what's its purpose? What does it do for you? And 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 it does more than just producing a plan in order. Um, planning it helps us first and foremost understand the situation. So you got to understand, right? And there's different methodologies we we used in planning, but we got to understand the situation. So it's pulling together that aspect. So then you can go about identifying a problem and and developing solutions for that problem. So that's one aspect of planning writ large. Um, And then planning does much more than that. It then, after you figure out what, you know, your course of action and what you want to do, um, planning then also provides direction. We use planning to then actually tell people kind of what to do and their left and right limits. 
And then I think the other thing about planning is it helps us look to the future. It helps us to anticipate. So I, I brought that up in, in the beginning about like a lot of people when they think planning, they think MDMP and they think procedural. But I think the important part when we start talking about planning and then we're gonna talk about planning pitfalls is you kinda of, kinda of understand the fundamentals of planning. Why do you plan? Um, what are the different types of planning? You know, the difference between conceptual and detailed planning. How does planning fit into other aspects of the operations process like execution? So trying to understand those basic fundamentals is really, really important, um, kind of the funnels of, of, of planning, to understand kind of the technical aspects of planning, which are very, very important too. And I'll just give an example. Um, you need to know how to war game. There are, you know, techniques and procedures for wargaming within planning. Um, but you also need to know kind of some fundamental aspects of planning too. And that kind of leads us to the definition, which is art and science. You know, planning is both an art to it, and then there's actually a science to it. So um, that's kind of our broad definition of what planning is. Can you, can you explain the differences between conceptual and detailed planning? Does, is it the case that one echelon does one or more of the other? Yeah, I think, I think, uh, so what we say about in, um, in, in, in ADP 5.0 is, you know, generally, usually any planning has a conceptual component to it and a very detailed component. And there's a really nice graphic in the book that kind of shows it's not one or the other. It requires both. So there's this, you know, when we talk conceptual, you know, in anything we do, and in military planning as well, you've got to start off with a framework, a broad vision. Um, and then that vision, you know, as we decide on kind of what our framework, our broad approach, or how we're, our, our course of action, or how we're going to accomplish the mission, um, that, that's more conceptual, but there's so much detail to it. How much, what's, what's the space involved in there, um, everything to supply rates, movement rates, all those things. And so there's a conceptual component to planning and then a detail component, but they, they coexist because you can't come up with a big idea that's just not feasible because the big idea is based off of reality and, and those details, right? So that's that dynamic. But then you mentioned echelon. And so I would say there's a little difference by echelon. I think the higher the echelon you go, generally your planning and your plans become more broad or more conceptual. So think about it if you're you know, a rifle platoon leader, you receive a mission, you're probably using troop leading procedures, it's going to be, you know, I have my mission, you're everywhere from here's where I'm leaving from, here's my route, very specific, I'm going, you know, a thousand meters on azimuth 57, you know, I'm going to cut right, and, and there's distances, and this is location, and it gets pretty detailed with your platoon, you know, that uh, you know, I'm going to have a security element, assault element, and a support element, and it's pretty well detailed. But you bring that up to a division, conducting a division attack with three maneuver brigades, and uh, and and you just don't want to get to that level of detail. There's still detail involved there, um, but it, but there is a little difference by echelon. Okay, so now that we've defined planning, let's talk about planning in relationship to other activities in the operations process. Can you tie us into that framework? Those aspects being planning, preparing, executing, and assessing with the commander driving all of that? Yeah. So for folks, we'll go back in, in doctrinal history a little bit, um, but we've, we've, had, we've had planning a planning process. I mean, if you even go way back to like 1905, you know, there was estimate of the situation, and that's really the first time we had codified doctrine about 1905 field service regulation. And over time, you know, we did have doctrine on planning. Um, and then, like in 1997, in what was 101-5, we basically had the MDMP. And the MDMP equaled planning. Um, and it was about, in, in, actually it was, in 2001, 3.0, is when we came up with this idea with the operations process. Because we said, Planning is very, very important, but it's only half the battle. Because same with decision making. You can make decisions, but you gotta put decisions into action. And so in order to try to put planning in perspective, the operations process, that mo model hit you know, Army doctrine, the cycle of plan, prepare, execute, and assess. So it's that, it's that young. 
It's 2001, you said? 2001 is the first time you see it in doctrine, in, in, in FM 3.0. And so then it was advanced in, um, in the 2003 edition of FM 6.0, and we've kind of had that model with us since. Um, and I think it's a very good model. And I, I was going to, I got this quote here that I wanted to talk about, and I think it relates it to it. Um, and let me backtrack just real quick. What I like about some of the newer ADPs and, and this cycle of books that's come out is we spent a lot of time researching quotes and historical vignettes to try to get at and emphasize different points of, of doctrine trying to, to get at. But I think this gets to the ops process. And it's, it's a quote by uh, Field Marshal Montgomery. And it says, it is a mistake to think that once an order is given, there is nothing more to be done. You have to get to see that is carried out in the spirit in which you intended. And so that quote, I think, has a couple aspects to it. One is leadership, right? So leadership, I, I've given the order, the direction, and now I'm going to use my leadership to carry it done. But I, another point to this is there's much more than just the plan. you got to put the plan into action. And so in preparation, for example, we have a list of several tasks of preparation. Well, one of the tasks of preparation is... Um, plans to ops handover. So the folks that made the plan, we got to make sure that folks are gonna execute the plan, understand the plan. So there's, that's a preparation, a preparation, that's a transition phase. Not only external, like from, you know, say the brigade to the battalions, but even if you're like in a division staff, you have a group of planners in the plan cell, they gotta ensure that the current ops section understands the plan. So that's preparation, right? And there's some other activities like rehearsal. We gotta, before we're gonna do it, we're gonna rehearse this, right? And so that's the preparation part of it. But then we have execution. You got to put that plan into action. And so we're gonna talk about some pitfalls coming up here, but, and it's kind of on the execution side, but we know that the plan is, is the beginning. It's based off some assumptions, but things will change. And so now here's this relationship here. We're in execution. It's based off an original plan, but it's got to be adjusted. And then I think the fourth part of op the operations process is so important, which is tied to what I was just talking about in execution. You're always assessing. So we're seeing what has changed and then making adjustments. We're now we're back to planning again in execution. So I think the model is very good, um, and it's been very helpful to say, yeah, planning is really, really important, but there's more to it than just planning. In, in command and control. Right. So you've gone through the planning process and described how it's supposed to go. It's easier said than done. Um, in ADP 5.0, we've, we've outlined and warned of some pitfalls that planners can face. So first is the pitfall of attempting to forecast and dictate events too far in the future. From a maneuver perspective, what does this look like and at what point is it, have you gone too far? Right. So I'm just going to backtrack just a little bit sure, because, sure. so, the, you know, ADP 5.0 lists four pitfalls, right? Are those the only pitfalls? No. no. Right. So, so you kind of, kind of over time talking with a lot of folks around the army and learning things, you know, what are some of common pitfalls? And the Marine Corps also has a list of kind of pitfalls in their planning book too, and we're looking at those as well. So, you know, you kind of choose kind of a, a few things, and we thought these were some of the most important. Um, but of all the four we picked, and, and we say this in the book, all of them stem from one basic kind of issue, if you will, and it's, and it's, um, we say, these pitfalls generally stem from a common cause, the failure to appreciate the unpredictability and uncertainty of operations. And so now that's what it gets to. It's, it's, so that's, that's why, you know, this, this, it's bigger than planning, right? You gotta kinda understand the nature of operations. And so there's, so, so it's a broader study. And there's two kind of schools of thought on this is like, and, and it's just sometimes just what, what people think in their head, right? You kind of believe that things would generally are predictable and then you can go about um, taking action along that predictable nature or you kind of say, hey, the enemy's got to vote, things are going to change and I need to be a little bit more flexible. So I think that gets down to the, the essential idea about how you view operations 
is going to be how you plan. And so what we're doing is we're cautioning against some things. And so your first question is like, well, forecasting the future, what is too much? And again, now we're back to art and science, right? And it's judgment. And, and, it, and you don't want to ever say this, it depends. But a lot of times it, you know, it does depend on the situation. But you probably could have some general rules of thumb. And it, depending on echelon. But I mean, let's just take a division, for example. You probably are going to be able to, you know, forecast and have a relatively detailed plan of the first phase or phases of your operation. But you notice how, like, say, for example, again, in a division attack, after like phase two, they're no longer solid objectives, they're dotted objectives because we think we may get there. And the level of planning associated with that is, is we're not spending a lot of time on that. We're aware, we think it's, there's potential, things are gonna happen, but we're not basic, you know, we're not positioning and planning and setting everything up that it's gonna go just that one way. So it's a judgment call about how far, you know, you wanna plan into the future, but, but you know, there's limits to how far you can go, real, be effective of thinking about what may happen in the future. So that's gonna kinda guide your, your plan. Yeah, and so then that, that leads to kind of like branches and, and of course sequels you mentioned uh being able to kind of shift fire on on what's going on so they sound very similar but those are those are different right can you go into the difference between those two so by definition a sequel can be based on outcomes of current operations to include both success stalemate or defeat um can you go into that a little bit right i think the best way to delineate between branches and sequels is um, if you were to think about, and again, let's go back to phase. So you're in a current phase of the operation. Let's just say you're in the defense. And so this is at a tactical level. You're in the defense. The branches kind of are going to get at the what ifs that occur in, in the defense. What if the, you know, we think the enemy generally is going to attack from this direction. What if the enemy attacks from that direction? So we're actually going to have you know, depending on the level of detail, we're going to have a branch plan to cover what if that happened. And uh, those are normally, you know, it depends on national, et cetera, but those generally are developed pretty thoroughly. And they're associated with decision points and all those things. And, and I think it's essential, right? It gives us options. Um, what a sequel is, is a little different. And probably we now start need to be thinking at higher echelons. Um, core and above, not necessarily, but it's generally what happens after success or failure. Yeah. And it normally represents almost, it can in some cases, a new mission in itself, Com complete task organization force. So you're going from the defense, and if that's successful, my sequel is the counteroffensive. That's a big kind of a, it's, it's a more broader kind of change. So you're still thinking about it and it could be in somewhat detail, but I think, so I think that's a little, little different uh, way of explaining branches and sequels. So right just there, you know, it's, a, it's easy to fall into our next pitfall, which is trying to plan too much in detail. Um, I found it interesting reading through 5.0 that it, it says the less certain the situation, the fewer details a plan should include. It sounds a little counterintuitive I get it but can you kind of go through that as well yeah um, so again it's it's really art right and judgment yeah. and none of this is solid but think of think of think of this situation so let's go back to the defense again say I'm in a brigade defense and um, I'm not quite certain the direction the enemy is going to attack from so I got a couple choices um, I can now sit there and and, and go well, I'm going to account for every kind of possibility, and I'm going to be planning in detail, and I'm going to be assigning a forces to cover all things. Or I can say, I'm not quite sure, so what I'm going to do, and this is part of the planning process, and of course the commander's involved in this, commander guidance given this, instead of doing quite that, I'm going to just develop a, a larger mobile reserve, right, that uh, I'm going to locate in a position where it can respond to those three possibilities. And so in a sense, that's less detailed, right? Yeah. And I'm not trying to get to the, you know, preposition where that reserve is going, you know, in all those different ways. I've, I've, I'm less certain, so therefore, I'm gonna account for this by 
If I'm real certain, for example, and I know I just kind of skipped subject, but on the offense, if I'm very, very certain, I can have a very deliberately planned attack because I know everything, right? But if I'm kind of less certain, I might want to choose to do a movement to contact and assign folks access of advance instead of very specific lanes and routes. So that's kind of what we're talking about is the level of uncertainty and certainty and the amount of detail. But again, it's judgment, situational dependent, it's art. We kind of learn these things as we do them through training and education and experience. Um, and, and, you know, so it's not really any easy answer to it. Yeah. I like that example of the reserve. It, it brings about another example of planning because there's a reserve leader, a reserve commander. Now they have, in your example, those three options. They're going to plan their reserve response, right? Then it brings about the, the importance of that shared understanding. Right. You know, some operations can be quite complex, and there's a need for finite details. However, this leads us to the next one, which is using the plan as a script. Can you talk us through that? Because it's hard to imagine soldiers not seizing an opportunity if given the chance. I feel like this is closely tied to the climate of the command. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I think that's there's two aspects to this. And, and so you, you did mention there are some aspects of, of, of an operation that seem to be very scripted, and I'll just say synchronized. They okay. need to be synchronized, and you, we can go an airfield seizure. We can go in air assault operations. We can do a river crossing. We can do a deliberate breach. And because there's lots of moving pieces that have to be pulled together in a, in a time frame, you know, it's, it's, it's in a sense um, highly synchronized. But let's go the word script, because we know that probably something's going to happen that messes up that synchronization. So now here's where we get to the idea of script. So we, we, we still have a, a very kind of detailed plan to get us through this, but when something goes wrong, right, we don't keep doing the things just because the plan said it, the script, we got to adjust. And that's the point we're making it. So it's almost like, it's almost like if you were making that a pitfall, it would almost be on the execution side. But it's just when you're, it's just your way of thinking about planning. If you think you're going to be able to just script out how you're going to fight and then fight it without realizing that anything from weather to the enemy to misunderstanding of the plan is going to affect the execution of it. And so we're not just going to keep following. If things change, you can't keep following the plan. Yeah, you can't keep yeah, sticking to the plan that doesn't work. Now, the, now you're right. But here's another point. Thing. This is where you get into command and leadership. But just because you have a couple flaws don't mean you come off plan, right? Then now we're into command decisions of when do you change your plan? That's the art. Right. And it's really you were starting to get it, you know, that's business of commanders. Because, you know, combat is, is very difficult and hard, right? And so there's a point in time where, where you know, it's command decisions of when you're going to come off, um, you know, adjusting the plan too much from what was originally envisioned. That's when you go into your branches, right? Well, you, you could go into branches, but I'm saying, like, you didn't even think about the branch. Yeah. Right? And, oh, okay. and we, we're yeah. going to have to make that kind of change. Okay. A rapid ch choice. Right. Finally, the, the last one we have is sort of a consequence of falling into these traps continuously, and these pitfalls become institutionalized. So what does, it, what does that mean to be institutionalized, and is there a certain echelon we're discussing here? Well, I think, I think what we're trying to say here on, on the pitfall of using planning, using the, the, uh, um, the planning process itself, in, you know, um, for example, um, you have the MDMP, and the MDMP in doctrine says you normally do three courses of action. And you institutionalized that idea that I always have to do three courses of action. You don't have to do three courses of action because in that sense we're saying you're using it, you know, you're institutionalizing the process itself. Um, um, so that's kind of what we're getting at, that there's flexibility and you use judgment um, when you do it. When you have an op order, for example, that has A through Z in appendices, that's the formatted order that's available for you to put or, you know, information in those various annexes. But you don't have to use them. 
So that's what we're getting at, kind of on like you, you don't have, you know, there's flexibility in our technical aspects of planning that you, you, you just don't have to follow all those rules all the time. You know, they're, they're guide points and use your judgment for, you know, how you want to do it. Another example is, um, and, and, and we really don't say this in doctrine, but, you know, it's it kind of unit SOP, but let's say the unit, uh, a, a division or core level unit said, hey, the planning horizon for the plan cell is 72 hours and above, and the planning horizon for foo ops is 72 hours to 24, right? So that's, that's kind of a, a, a mark. But where you get in problems is when, like, the staff starts arguing and saying, well, you know, that's not within 72 hours, you know, that's really yours. We've we got to do better than that, and, 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 you know, you work through those type of issues, not just institutionalize, you know, rigid rules on the technical aspects of planning. So that's kind of what that pitfall is talking about. When you, when you were writing this, just to kind of sum up the conversation, you probably were doing a lot of historical study of operations and plans. Is there anything that stuck out to you while you were writing um, writing 5.0, a specific plan, because you mentioned the vignettes and stuff. No, right, yeah. So, uh, you know, I personally have been involved in this for a long time. So I've been in writing doc for like 20 years. So i kind of been studying this a long time. And so it, it, I would probably say, and that's where I take us back to like 2005. The first time, you know, the Army had... We had doctrine on this is the troop leading procedure. We had doctrine on this is how you do the MDMP. We had doctrine on this is the orders format. But we didn't have a lot of doctrine that talked about our conversation we had today. What is planning? What are the fundamentals? What are the values of planning? What are the guides? I mean, maybe our next podcast we talk about guides to effective planning, sure. the corollary. Um, but those, those ideas of the fundamentals of, of planning and the operations process started some time ago and just continuing, you know, uh, to, to current date, and we're evolving these kind of ideas, but they're fundamentally basically the same they are. Um, I think that's what I got a part, part of writing this. And, and to the listeners, um, I think we, we talked about a narrow topic today, but the richness, I think, if you go back and you, you read and study both um, ADP 5.0 and ADP 6.0 and I, in our FM 3.0, you know, really trying to understand the nature of operations and how the operations process works, I, I think makes you both, if you understand the technical nature of planning, you know, how to do the MDMP, et cetera, and then the broader fundamentals, I, I, I think you're well on your way to be an effective leader, planner, um, operator. That's great, sir. Is there anything else that you want besides that you want to leave the audience with? I'm looking forward to when you invite me back again. Great. This is a great conversation. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that does it for this episode of Breaking Doctrine, Foxhole Fundamentals. I'd like to thank our listeners and note that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the official position of the United States Army, the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command, or the Combined Arms Center. I'm Captain Wyatt Harper. This is Breaking Doctrine, Foxhole Fundamentals.